Good. <clears throat> Hello one and all, welcome back to the channel. Now, last time we, we had a look at um, some paperbacks that I've been hoarding for a long time. And they were all comic related, of course, um, if you saw it. Um, we're going to stay on that theme today of comic books. And I want to talk to you about uh, quite a unique um, US publisher's um, Tomorrow's, that's T-W-O, Morrow, Tomorrow's, um, public publications. Um, they've been publishing now for 30 years and their headquarters are Raleigh, North Carolina, I think it is. Um, now, over that span of 30 years, they've produced 11 publications and all but one um, have been comic related. Um, the, the, only, the only outlier was um, something called Brick Journal which catered for all the Lego enthusiasts. Uh, not, not my scene but um, I'm sure they were very interesting. Uh, now the, the, the why they were so unique is that, as I say they, they mainly published comic related stuff and not only was it comic related, but it was um, it was high quality stuff, high quality publications. They did magazines, and they also did a lot of trade paperbacks, which you know I would I would have to cover in another video because uh, the magazines are going to take up a while. <coughs> but um, yeah, so th th they were quite unique in that respect. You know, they didn't they didn't uh, produce sort of like. Uh, 32 page pamphlets for a couple of dollars they produced um, quality magazines on quality paper with um, excellent sort of journalism and writing and um, and a lot of um, illustrations of course um, and I started off I think around about six dollars back in uh, back in 90 oh, was it 94 yep yeah. and um, they, I think, I think most of the publications are about ten or eleven dollars now. Um, now they began. I think the the publisher was a, a big Jack Kirby fan because they began with a, a smaller publication called the uh, Jack Kirby Collector, which I believe was quarterly when it started, and it wasn't of quite the same quality as um, the ones that came after. But um, <clears throat> that's where it all started for them. Now, unfortunately, I I don't have any of these because I've never been a great Kirby fan for my pains. Um, but I do have something quite nice to show you anyway with regard to Jack Kirby. And that's, um, that's this rather large, I can get it all in. And, I mean, although I say I've never been a Kirby fan, I do appreciate, I do appreciate his, um, his work. Uh, let back a bit so you can, you can see some of this stuff. A little cap there. Um, you know, some of his fourth world stuff, well, you know, there's a, there's a good example there, you know. I must admit, I did like those books back in the day, but as I say, overall, I've never been much of a, a Kirby enthusiast. Um, but, I mean, this is, this is um, a real nice publication. Get the surfer in there. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, the more you look at his stuff, the more you do <coughs> appreciate what it <clears throat> what a draftsman he was. Just trying to find some of the, the, the nicer stuff just to have a good look at, you know. I mean, really detailed and, and intricate work. Um, now, and now, now I see the stuff, well, when, when I saw this and I saw the stuff in, in black and white, um, 
And so I, I had more of an appreciation of how good he was. Um, let me find something nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, a nice double page spread there. I mean, you know, the work in that. Absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, this was a this was a twenty dollars uh, portfolio. You can see what I paid for it on the front there. Um, so yeah, it's a good old Captain America in the old red skull there, net. See if there's anything good up the front. Uh, a few strips. Uh, no, some of these earlier. Nice, uh, nice Galactus there. Really cool that one. <clears throat> and uh, as I remember, there's a nice, um, there's a nice yellow on the inside cover. If I can get to it. down this end. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Huh? But yeah, I mean that's the only <coughs> sorry, that's the only Kirby <coughs> Kirby related item that I have. Although as I say they did many, many oh it's still going, I think the Kirby collector. And um, shortly after that they they revived um, a fanzine that, that Roy Thomas, um, famous Marvel editor, did. It was it was nothing you know nothing in the quality of, of what I'm going to show you, but um, yeah I mean this became this became um, uh, I'll show you the first. If you, uh, it was a flip book. Um, Two covers on it, and I mean this. This covered more, more of the older, um, the older stuff, uh, a lot of fan-related stuff. Um, but um, you know, interesting for all that. And you know, the great thing is it had. I'll find a good example. It had a lot of um, black and white uh, pencil drawings. Um, there's a nice. Spirit there, for instance, on that, that side. Um, and uh, I mean, I mean, I've I've always thought that um, back in the back in the nineteen seventies, when Warren Publications started with uh, creepy, eerie, Vampirella, all of that stuff, I was always of the opinion that the artwork in there looked looked better than. The Marvel and DC comics of the era, There's Gil Kane there with the Atom, um, because you could actually see the artwork, whereas with with, with the poor paper and um, the inking and um, the colouring, you know, you just couldn't see the artwork on a lot of uh, the earlier comics. Um, so I mean, it's an opinion I still have. I, I still think the the Warren magazines back then looked better than the digitised stuff that we get now, you know, computer generated, because uh, I'm not a big fan of that. It's uh, Some of it's god-awful, to be honest. Um, but, um, yeah, so I'll just now I've got a lot of these, so I'll just show you the, the first um, four issues. Again, it's a, a flip book. And... Um, Fourth issue, nice Joe Cubert Hawkman on the front there. But um, yeah, they, they, these are really good books if you if you're sort of like um, a comic student, really, because it's it's more deep, goes deeper than um, the, some of the other publications I did. But um, yeah, I mean it's interesting if you if you're interested in. In uh, artists and fan chat and what have you. 
So that was Alter Ego. That was their second publication. Um, and then they... I think this was the third publication. Um, I'll be showing you these later, actually. So um, that, that, was, um, that was a little one that they gave away uh, if you got a subscription. Uh, there's a bit of hoo-ha later on because they put it on general sale. <clears throat> and all of those who got it free, you know, on subscription because they bought a subscription were less than uh, pleased, if you like. But, um, yeah, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you the comic book artist later on because I have almost a complete run of the 25 uh, that were produced. Now, an another nice one they did later on was um, that issue. This was mainly um, on a theme, you know, they would pick a theme like that one is Adam Hughes, as you can see from the cover there. And basically it was, um, it was a lot of Adam Hughes stuff. We can find something nice. It's a Justice League cover there with a Joker at the back there. Um, and uh, yeah. Just some generally nice, nice artwork, and, and as I say, you get you get a lot of a lot of penciled stuff that um, has not been inked yet, you know, and uh, that's great. Just trying to find a nice full page yellow. You can yeah, well, there's an maze agency that he did the cover the cover for that. And uh, like I say, they this concentrated on on one or two artists. Uh, I haven't got many of these. I, I've actually got some of the earlier ones here. And I've got three others which I can't find. They, they mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> no idea where they went. Um, that's number four. Got a Wolverine there. And I think there's a lot of... A lot of X-Men stuff in there, and there's a nice, um, uh, nice Walt Simons and Superman there. As you can see, you know, you can see the the joy of the, of the artwork without all the pencils and colouring. Um, just gives it a different dimension, which is which is why I love these magazines. Actually, um, you know, even even sort of like rough rough sketches that they do beforehand, you know, they're, they're lovely to see all the intricate penciling that goes on. Um, as I say, as opposed to the, some of the eyewash you see now. Digitally produced, not a big fan as you can well imagine. Another nice thaw by Simonson. Yeah, so uh, that was, um, and then the other issue that I can find is um, oh, the sort of Mike Rude and Steve Barron. Um, they were more well known in the independent, <clears throat> oh, the sun's gone in, you probably can't see me now, in the independent line. Of comics, uh, Nexus they did, and a few others, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is a nice example of a rough yellow. You know, what could artists do these rough drawings before they actually? This one over here, um, before they actually pencil the thing and ink the cover. We'll get somebody to ink the cover. There's a nice Gil Kane montage there. Great pencil that Gil Kane was. Um, and yeah, so give you a rough idea of what that um, what that magazine's about. As I say it's just it's just great to see all this lovely black and white this lovely artwork in black and white. Uh, so unfortunately I haven't got the other three issues at hand, so um, and then they did some um, some kind of books that were dedicated more, more to education, I think. Um, 
of artists. Um, this was one of the rough stuff. Uh, there again, it has a lot of a lot of black and white pillows. That's um, that's the very first issue. That one that was <coughs> two thousand and six. That's one of their later ones. This is uh, defunct now. There's a, a nice Kevin Nolan. Where's it gone? Is that it? Where are you, Kevin? Uh, I saw one, I just saw it. Uh, <laughs> imagine, how, uh, imagine how you can see something and then never find it again. Um, that's some more nice pencil stuff. Legacy artists just going through their techniques, um, which is uh, interesting if you, if like me, you're a student of uh, comic book art. Yeah, there's some nice roughs there, you know. I mean, they look great. Because a lot of a lot of artists uh, thumbnail the whole page out before they do it, but I like to see these. These uh, these large yellows, with some fourth world stuff going on there by the look of it. Yeah, so um, that's rough stuff. Um, then we have there's another issue there. Steve Rude. You got the general idea with the with the last issue. And then there was, this is more a professional how-to magazine. Uh, this one's more instructional, that one's more a, a breakdown of, of how artists work, but this is a, actually an instructional uh, one. And as I say inside, it's got um, more, not so much comic book yellows, but yellows on how to you know how to get started with your uh, with your drawing technique um, still interesting but uh, could, uh, you see there's something lovely there you go through these and you find these these little gems I love that um, yeah so that's what um, that's what Draw Magazine was all about. Um, got a couple of those. Uh, and then, uh, I think that's another defunct title. Um, then they did um, just a four issue thing. I don't know why it only lasted four issues. Uh, Comicology. I'm not sure what the difference was in this particular title. Um, it looks like more interviews. Um, that's number number one. Let's have a look at number two. See if we can get a feel for. So I mean, I've never really examined these ones. Um, yeah, it's more not half as interesting as as the others. Um, yeah, more interviews. There's one with Michael Aldred, for instance. Uh, and uh, as I say, I have all four. But the ones that were produced, the nice colours. And finally, we have number four. So that's uh, comicology. Now, as I say, the one, the one I want to uh, concentrate on for the last ten minutes of the video is the comic book artist. Now, there were there were twenty five of these. Uh, it is now defunct, but there were twenty five issues, um, plus this um, 
what I showed you at the start. <clears throat> the um, subscribers issue. Um, that was that one. Um, yeah, that's um, that's number one. I mean, these are these are quite collectible now. Um, I had a look on eBay, and surprisingly few, even <coughs> even the American uh, dealers uh, or you know sellers with stuff available to the U uh, UK. There's not not a whole bunch of, of any of these titles, to be honest. Uh, so they have become rather collectible, and some of them are not overly cheap. Um, this one was sort of an amalgamation of um, of art and interviews. That's a nice, nice Neil Adams portrait there. Um, nice joke here, but cover on the back of. Um, what happened here was um, the, the the first few of these were flip books because this one. Um, this one came before Alter Ego, and it, it's, it's got um, it's got Volume Two. So I think that probably became as a tryout before those ones I showed you earlier, um, and then they decided to put it into its own its own title. So that was um, number one. Let's make a bit of room here. Right, and some of these are still in plastic, so I won't bother getting them out. I'll just show you the, the covers. Again, you had a second alter ego. We saw that earlier, I showed you that earlier, the penciled version of it. Now, that doesn't look half so good, does it? <laughs> in my opinion. A flip book and number four and flip book again we'll see if we can find anything nice there's um there's an interview with Bernie Wrightson another great artist yeah, there's there. We'll see if we can find uh, find some more of his stuff because he was great. Yeah, that's, um, he did a lot of the uh, the Edgar Allan Poe stories for creepy and eerie uh, adaptations of the Edgar Allan Poe stories. You can see on that right there on the left. I don't know, I don't know what it is to you. Um, and so there's, there's quite quite a few interviews and stuff. Mainly interviews and artwork, I suppose. But um, you know, if you if you're into nostalgia like me, um, it really brings back the old sixties and seventies when I was really really into comic books. So you can see it probably. Yeah, nice. Um, so yeah, basically that's what. Um, there's a nice penciled, creepy cover. I don't ever made it into. I don't remember seeing that one. <clears throat> that was probably a one that was rejected, or I'll tell you. Yeah, unpublished cover by Roy, by Roy Crinkle. It was another great artist, did a lot of work for the Ace science fiction paperbacks. So yeah, there we go, there's four there. Now this is a great cover. I love this. 
It's uh, <clears throat> Nick Cardi now. Nick Cardi is one of those um, illustrators that was uh, very undervalued in my opinion. Um, did a lot of good work for DC in particular, I think. Um, let's just, you know, give you a closer look at some of that stuff. That's really nice with a with a yellow background. You know, it really pops that one. Um, and uh, continue the yellow theme on, on the back there. Now yeah, I've got the first ten intact as a run. Covers the marble bullpen. Frank Brunner cover there. Another very fine artist. Doctor Strange fame. And others, of course. Mm. We have a nice Paul Gulacy cover there for. Shang Chi, which of course he did, <clears throat> he drew for a long, long time. You can see all these names up here, there will be people who are uh, contributing as interviewees. Let me say, for people like me, it's um, really interesting stuff. And that's where the, no, the previous one was. But, uh, that's the second issue where the flip, flip book wasn't there, so obviously <coughs> they began putting Alter Ego into its own title, Volume 3, I assume. Oh, I don't know. can't remember. There's a Steve Rude cover there. Covers independence, um, although the X Men are not exactly independent, are they? <laughs> but uh, Nexus in the in the foreground is uh, right there. Number nine, we have the Charlton story. Now, no, I, I I love Charlton comics. Um, I know a lot of people weren't fond, <clears throat> but I mean, that's some great artists. Um, Steve Ditko did a lot of work. Um, Joe Statton in particular, I think, I think he's another very underrated artist, Joe Statton. I love his stuff. Now, I, I was quite miffed when I, when I read this because um, there's no interview or much artwork by Joe Statton in there. Um, but I'll show you later on why I became a bit less miffed. Um, so there's number 10. That completes the first 10, as I say, that I have. That one concentrates on Thor and Kirby's Fourth World by the look of it. Nice Walt Simonson cover there. I mean, you can see... Um, you can see what these were priced up like. I got these 20 years ago. Um, didn't necessarily pay that price because, you know, you used to get um, bulk deals back in the day. But, yeah. Now, uh, this is where I became unmiffed about Joe Statton because uh, he actually appears in that one. Surprised they did two, uh, two books highlight and chart all right now i have a little run here that's 13 with a lovely jean colan color oh, i mean that was very popular that term of dracula comic uh, horrors never did well um historically but um yeah i'll just quickly whip through these next few for you because as usual i'm running out of time Rex there, another good, good title. Was there any colon cover there? And Mark Adams again. And this is the cosmic stuff that I really enjoy. 
uh, Steve, uh, Jim Starlin's one of my all-time heroes um, when it comes to comic books, I must admit. Um, I know nothing about Harvey Comics whatsoever. And uh, I'll just whip through the last couple because I'm dangerously close to time up. Adam Hughes, Mike Mignola. I'm missing a couple at the back end. Um, National Lampoon, which I know a little bit about. And then finally, we have, who's that side, Alan Moore. Whoop, oh yeah. Alan Moore. So, folks, that's that's it. Um, I will just uh, take my leave now because, as I say, I'm running out of time. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. It's something a bit different. And I'll be back uh, very soon. Bye-bye now.